Hello everyone, and welcome to the Geek Wave. This is a new segment we're doing called Everything Anime, where we will be talking about a lot of things anime. Uh, you got your normal cast member, Gavin, and I'm accompanied by Kendall Cook. He's a new member of the Geek Wave, so welcome him warmly. And here, on um, this first episode, we're going to run down the five animes that will break your expectations. Coming in number five is one that I've watched, and it's called Samurai Flamanco. Really underground, nobody knows about it, but it was on Netflix uh, like a long time ago, and I did watch it. Basically, the premise of Samurai Flamanco is there's this guy that just throws on this Power Ranger-esque looking suit, and he just goes off in the streets fighting crime, and he gets like his, he gets his butt kicked all the time because he's just a normal man. Uh, in a suit protecting kids, like from just random random encounters, and it's nothing like supernatural in the first like two or three episodes, which is fine. You're just like, this is really weird, watching this guy in a rubber suit just walk the streets of Japan. But then it starts to break your expectations because you're really comfortable with this like normal esque setting of like everyday setting, and it just starts getting to just rapidly, rapidly spiral out of control. Uh, superpowers become introduced. Um, like, eventually it starts getting in kind of like the like animation style of One Punch Man, where like his punches somehow become super powerful. He's like flying through space, he's fighting like cyber demons, and just all this random stuff. Like, it's been a long time since I've watched it, but its weirdness and its ability to break my expectations left me at 3 a.m. on the couch just absolutely shook it. Like, I'm not even kidding you, it just spirals out just so rapidly, so that way by the final episode, he's literally like, king of the world, he's like some form of god, and he's still the same man wearing a rubber Power Ranger-esque suit. I mean, I'm so... Speaking of spiraling out of control, that leads us on to number four, which is uh, Grim Lagon. Now, Grim Lagon does a lot. Um, when I watched it, I don't like, my preference is I don't like Gundam anime at all. Um, so I was like, maybe I should open up the genres a little bit more, explore more of the different sides of anime, to get out of my comfort zone, see what else the anime has to offer. And so I was like, an old Gundam, I'll watch it, whatever, we'll see how it goes. Um, cause I had tried watching Gundam before, and I know the genre pretty well at this point, I just really didn't like it, but I was giving it like the eighth chance. Um, I like call Mecha Gundam, everything's Gundam. Everything's Gundam. At least to someone that doesn't watch yeah. Mecca. Uh, but yeah, and so I was like, it's just fine. It's another Mecca anime. Um, and then, like, I, I just don't know. It, it kind of just broke the genre for me. Because instead of just being, um, just everything is like, just big mobile suits fighting big mobile suits and repairing your mobile suits, the Mecca that you see, the main Mecca, is this tiny it's the size of basically like a shrimp compared to a whale compared to the enemy mechas. and it's just and it's just so funny and they, each of these mechas have the, these unique abilities but they don't it's just the main character's mecha for being so tiny and what it does is it even knows it's breaking expectations because uh the, the main protagonist big bro he's like we will now combine these two mecha <laughs> and all he does is Wait, that's illegal! Yeah, he takes the head of the main mecha and just puts it on top of a second mecha and then it miraculously somehow combines. It's and funny. I haven't I haven't seen any Gurren Lagon, but I have seen that scene and it made me laugh my head off. Yeah. Because I was expecting like Mighty Morph and Power Rangers like Megazord, like they were gonna fly and like morph and stuff, and it literally just like from what I recall of this scene, is it just like clunks onto the body? It does. And I was like, oh no! <laughs> and you're thinking, wow, they just lost their two only mecha. But then, yeah, everyone's like, this is idiotic. And even you're thinking it's idiotic. But then it works. And it, <laughs> it becomes like a central point to the plot. Is this ability? It's just so out of hand. And the thing literally spirals out of control. What it'll do is it'll have these really seemingly important characters, and then it'll just off them. But she can't do it in Gundam or Mecha animes. Because everyone has these characters. There's still the five same Power Rangers. Yeah, I mean. 
And so what happens if we get rid of Blue Ranger? They don't have a leg. You have a leg. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the thing. And when it does, it doesn't just centralize on like, oh, this character is gone. Like it actually lets you experience everyone's depression. You will in itself watching the show feel absolutely depressed halfway through the show. And you, I hated how much how bad the show made me feel because I had to stop and go to work. And I was like, well, are you okay? I'm like, no. You're sending I'm, mixed signals, man. You're like, I love this show. It's great, but I hated how it made me feel. No, I was depressed. Uh, I lost contact with my loved ones and friends. It's, it's good because of how it does make you feel. No, man, the fact that you get me emotional is really good. It's so weird, but it's brilliant. Honestly, one of the best animes I've ever seen. Coming in at number three on the list is one that maybe some of you guys have heard about because it did make a big splash for kind of subverting expectations. It's Made in Abyss. And this anime came out, what was it, a year and a half, two years ago? It's, it's fairly it's new. fairly recent. And it caught a lot of people off guard, particularly the people who read the manga. And it caught them off guard because it just isn't what it appears on the outside. And uh, for me, I cheated a little bit. I actually knew ahead of time that it was not going to be what it appeared because it got so much press about how it looked like it was a cutesy anime and ended up being something different. For those of you that haven't seen it, it's just, it looks like a feel-good show. Yeah. It's got a cute little world where everybody's just a, like a pumpkin-headed, chibi character. Like, I would say probably like... 80% of the cast are children at this orphanage that you meet and it's just adorable they've got like tiny little fingers and it's just all about them kind of trying to become explorers in the abyss um, but over time, over the course of this season, at least in the anime it just slowly becomes a little more uncanny valley and a little bit more weird is the way, best way to describe it. The same way that uh, Alice in Wonderland is weird, I guess, where it just becomes a little bit so off-kilter yeah. and disturbing. Because and... Yeah, I, I haven't seen it. Yeah, I've been wanting to watch it for a long time. Um, and yeah, I just, the only clip I saw left me feeling so like particularly internally disturbed that I really wanted to watch it. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting because it does so much to kind of subvert your expectations of what this, I would consider it like a slice of life adventure anime is, and also just kind of a typical arc of the show as well. I did say before that the people who read the manga had an advantage, and that's because where the anime actually leaves off, you end up meeting kind of the main antagonist of the story in like the last two episodes of the season, so it's weird to have kind of a villain that gets introduced right in time for the season to end, um, but it it did mess with me a little bit. It was strange to kind of see just a feel-good show kind of turn into this um, disturbing, like, berserk style, obviously not that brutal, but um, just kind of horror fest at the end. So those of you that haven't watched it, you should check it out if you want something that kind of goes awry. Uh, and number two is another one of my favorite anime. I'm a big fan of kind of the message that it brings along, and that's uh, Nisekoi, which was a huge uh, subversion of genre and expectation for me. Um, those of my friends who know me know that I'm really big into Battle Shonen, and I'm really not into anything like, for the most part, slice of life or romance or stuff like that. Just say it just, harem. Just say harem. I'm not into it. But there was about a month stretch of time where I decided that I just did want to just watch a bunch of like rom-com harem anime. I don't know why. I was just like, this is what I'm going to do. And I ended up trudging through a lot of really subpar shows, I would say, that were just about what you'd expect from, from harem anime. But Nisekoi ended up really subverting my expectations because it had meaning. Uh, at least when I think of harem anime, and some of you might beg to differ, but when I think of it, I think of throwaway main character, throwaway plot, 
shallow characterization of characters, and it's mostly just about what we want to see. We want to see our main character and all of our favorite girls get into awkward situations and have to deal with those feelings that they're developing. And that does happen. I won't say that it doesn't happen in the show, but with the way that it works out, it has meaning. The basis of the show is that our main character, Raku Ichijo, is the son of the Yakuza head. And he ends up having a, a transfer student from America come to his school. Her name is Chichoge Kirisaki. And her father is the head of the American mafia that has now moved into their, this hometown in Japan. And their families begin fighting. And ultimately, the, the heads of household get together and say, we don't want our two clans to kill each other. You two, my daughter and my son, have to pretend to be in a, in a relationship and just make it work. You don't really have to date, but you have to pretend to be together to give us that, that bond of unity so that our gangs won't kill each other. And initially, they hate each other so much. They don't get along, their personalities don't mix, and they hate spending time with each other. And while this is happening, it's, I believe, their senior year of high school, and Ichijo has a crush on a girl named Onodera, and he really wants to ask her out because he's had a crush on her since childhood. But what I like about the show and the subversion of expectations is the message that comes across uh, that it gives about love basically about what it means to be in a relationship with a person and how Ichijo and Chitoge over time as they're forced to be together they start seeing the good in each other and actually start recognizing that the things that make them butt heads are also the things that they enjoy about each other and bring them together and it sounds cheesy and it kind of is but it's it's a really feel-good show and for a harem anime it was weird for me to get to the end of the anime, which didn't reach the end of the manga, and for me to actually be invested enough that I I literally, I finished it, saw that there was no more, and I had to immediately look up how the story ended because I was going to be super upset if it didn't end up the way that I wanted it to. Okay, so you're saying the biggest subversion is just the subversion of the genre, that it's not just about like this completely shallow empty characters but you actually get completely invested oh absolutely at least at least for me that's what it was and there's definitely shallower characters that are in the story for mostly comedy's sake basically but i think it really hit home some good points that were actually meaningful which was weird for a harem anime for me and so i think that it really took the stereotypes that the anime community has about the harem genre and turned it into something very positive. Yeah, number one on our list, and the one that has subverted my expectations exceedingly high, is an anime called Welcome to the NHK. Now, when I say subverted expectations, this this anime in itself is just, as an entity, just completely weird. But it's, it's good. It's like a like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure good. So, the first episode, this is where it completely severs everything and just subverts your expectations, has literally nothing to do with the plot. So, it's a slice of life, and it's really good. It's a really good slice of life. Um, but the first episode is just filled with like this chaotic action, and you don't even know what to call it action. It's basically this guy running away from something, the protagonist running away from something, but it doesn't show what. And it's just him like running away from explosions. There's like gunfights, but like in the rest of the anime, the rest of the show, no explosions, no guns. They wasted it all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically, <laughs> and and it's weird because it has this, it has this like iconic creature that's associated with the anime, but you don't know what it is, and it one never explains throughout the entire show what it is and what it means to the plot, and two, they're using this creature like. In the in the first episode, is like he literally uses like this. It's like it's like this little creature with a Santa hat. And he just takes off the Santa hat and throws a creature as a grenade. And it's like I said, it's psychedelic. You will be thinking you are tripping out. You will be hallucinating. So if you watch this anime at three in the morning, you will be absolutely being like, okay, it is time for bed. I'm not <laughs> not understanding this. Um, yeah, yeah, and. 
Um, but yeah, the rest of the narrative, the rest of the plot, everything else that goes into it is just so sweet and soft and slow moving. And it has all these other themes that when you watch the first episode, you're like, you're asking the developers and the public, you're like, what the hell were you thinking? I mean, that being said, I'm sure that it's in there for a reason because I tried to reevaluate the plot. And one of the big themes of the show is uh, like understanding your own uh, psychology, understanding what you think at all times. So going back and trying to understand this as like a dream, you can kind of pick and pull some things out. But that's only if you rewatch it, and that's only if you really want to invest the time into it. Um, but that being said, they, I, I know plenty of people that have turned their face, turned turned the other direction at least halfway into the first episode because their expectations are built that this is going to be one, incredibly stupid, two, nonsensical, and three, like, why, like, like I don't want to watch something that's going to trip up my mind when I could be watching this actual slice of life, which is in the category that it's in. So, it turns away all, a bunch of viewers that want to go on that road to watch it. But if you invest yourself and you actually get to episode two, it starts to actually develop the plot. And even in this, uh, even, even in the plot, it subverts your expectations continually because you're not sure what the plot is. There's not really a general plot. The main, the main consensus of the plot is this otaku is getting help from this girl to become less of an otaku. Um, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it seems genuinely like okay, but like I said, prepare for every like plot twist to be a subversion especially the last three episodes um everything just turns on your head and you just don't feel comfortable thinking of either person being okay no one's okay in this show so instead of having like <laughs> like a, a trustworthy narrative narrator a trustworthy narrator oh my god a trustworthy narrator that sounds terrible narrator? yeah narrator you don't. You don't have anyone that knows what's going on. And so continually, when they say things are going to happen, and they don't happen, or they happen in a nonsensical way, you just... You, every expectation you build is just demolished. And I think that's set up greatly in the first episode, but it's... Yeah. Every step of the way is just your expectations are built, and then demolished. And it's... It's great. It's a great anime. It's not in my top five, nor my top ten, but it's it's pretty high on my list. I highly recommend Welcome to the NHK. And I don't recommend skipping the first episode because you need to know what you're <laughs> what you're getting into. And you're the whole the whole season, you're just trying to figure out what does the first episode mean and where does it apply. Yeah, that's the list of our top five enemies that will break your expectations. Uh, if we left any big ones out, let us know in the comments. Um, or just yeah, let us know if there's anything that you think should be on the list or anything that you think shouldn't be on the list. Also, just give us a little, little notification. So we're always looking for your feedback as well. If you'd like to see more top five or top ten lists that we can do, give us some ideas in the comment section. We're always looking for... Um, different ideas for content as well. Yeah, and if I haven't seen an anime, he has. So, we got the library pretty full up here. But that being said, uh, feel free to tune in next week. We'll see you guys later. Okay.